Hello everyone, today we're going to make a cell GUI, so when we have uh, reached the maximum stamina, it'll prompt a screen saying maximum stamina reached, uh, would you like to sell now in exchange for coins or something like that. So let's get straight into it. So to get started we're going to open our starter GUI and we're going to add in a new screen GUI. Now in this screen GUI we're going to call it, first of all let's rename it to um, cell GUI because this is all it's going to be, it's going to force us to sell. We can then click add and a, we're going to add a frame, let's add a frame. Now you can make this look however you would like of course, I'm just going to give a rough idea. So first of all I'm going to make a size of 0 .30, 0 0.30, this just gives me a bigger screen uh, size kind of thing to work with. I'm then going to drag this to how I want it and whack it in the middle of the screen. I don't want it too big, I just want us, you know, in the middle of the screen. Next what I'm going to do is under our main screen, I'm going to go to one of our text labels, copy the background colour, and I'm going to paste it into this frame so they have the same colour. I will also make a border size pixel of 0, and I'm going to, in this frame, this first I'm going to rename it to uh, background, and in here I'm going to add a UI corner, and I'm going to make the radius 0 0.10. Actually, that might be a bit too much. I might make it 0 0.050, like so. And I might even give this a, a UI stroke, like so. I'll give this a UI stroke to make it look a bit nicer, with a thickness of maybe 3. Okay, now in this background, I'm going to add a text label, which I'm going to rename to, uh, I'll just call it header. This text label is going to have a size of 1, 0, 0 0.20. 0. Actually, yeah, that, that'll do. A background transparency of 1. And I'm going to make the text white, just so it contrasts with this blue. Scale it up. Make it bold. Uh, yeah, make it bold. Uh, Source Sans Pro, because who doesn't like that? And I'm going to make this text say, Max Points Reached, or something like that. Yeah, I'll make it say, Max Points Reached. I might actually um, add a UI text constraint into this, UI text size constraint. Uh, make the max text size like 40, uh, maybe 45, just so it's not like touching the sides of the, uh, the border here. And I'm going to duplicate this text, add a new one, rename it to uh, description, drag this down a bit. Make it a bit bigger like this. We still want to leave room for two button or for a button at the bottom. So we'll leave the uh, uh, thing down here for a sell button. We'll make this description say something like exchange points now and save up for more stamina or something like that. This uh, basically just I'm going to not make this bold either. Just saying, you know, if you exchange your points now, you can save up and get a stamina upgrade in the future when we make those. I'm not going to uh, make this too crazy at the minute. It's just kind of like a little base for... You do design it however you would like. Anyway, now we're going to add a text button into here, which this will be uh, exchange button. With, with a size of one, one zero, zero, uh, 1010. It just makes it easy, and then we can scale it down here we can add in a, a UI stroke, not UI stroke, sorry, a UI corner of 1, 0 on the scale, or maybe not, 0 0.6, oh, that's not going to work well, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 works nicely, maybe 0 0.3. And I'm going to make this button have a background colour of maybe a, a dark blue, Make this say exchange, make the text white, scale it up, make it bold, maybe make this a different font for, for a Doka one for example, in which case I'm not going to have it bold, um, and that will do. Okay, now once we've made this, we're going to go to this background frame and make it visible turned off so it's invisible. We're then going to add a local script into this exchange button, and this is where we're going to work our magic. So first of all, let's create a local player variable, which we'll assign to uh, the player, which will be game.players.localPlayer. Next, what we're going to do is need to, we need to call a function whenever the uh, button itself is clicked. And in this function, we will uh, basically get the lower torso of the player 
or the humanoid root part if they're if you're in a R15 I believe it is um, and we're gonna set that equal to the coin pad lander so first of all let's say script dot parent which is our button dot in fact actually let's just say local button equals script dot parent because that's what it is the parent of the script is the button now we can say button dot mouse button one click colon connect function like this and here this will be um, this will be called every time we click the button so what we need to do is first of all go to your game settings avatar and make sure your avatar type is R15 it, you can do this with R6 but you'll have to make a change uh, so make sure it's either R6 or R15 now if your game is R15 um, you wanna write this local humanoid root part equals player dot character dot uh, humanoid root part in fact we're gonna do uh, colon uh, find first child humanoid root part uh, to make sure you know so that they ha uh, we only run this line of code if they have a humanoid root part then we'll say if humanoid root part then so if the humanoid root part does exist then we will say humanoid root part dot c frame equals game um, equal yeah game dot workspace dot uh, we want to find our coin pad basically so dot exchange uh, dot island one buildings dot exchange building dot uh, coin pad plus vector free dot new uh, because we want to uh, so this will be a vector free here uh, this uh, coin pad so we want dot c frame as well so game dot workspace dot island one buildings dot exchange building dot coin pad c frame so this will be your coin pad sorry I I've done messed that up there. Coinpad dot c frame plus vector free dot new, and this will add um, more space. So we want to add zero on the x because we don't want to change the x. We want to go up a bit on the y so there's an offset. So let's go with an offset of maybe two studs and zero on the z. And then after that we can say button dot parent, which would be the background frame dot visible equals false. So that is if you're on R15. However, if you are on R6, uh, is it R6 they call it? Is that what it is? I oh, don't know, I never use it. Uh, R6, yes. If you are on R6, you will need to write this code instead. So if you're, so let me just make a note of this. R15. If you're on R6, you will need to write local uh, lower torso equals player dot character colon find first child lower torso like so and then we're going to drop down so lower torso or first of all if statement again if lower torso then lower torso dot c frame equals game dot workspace dot your coin pad basically plus vector free dot new and then once again i'm going to go with zero two zero you might have to play around with this value yourself just so you don't glitch in the floor when you teleport and then button dot parent dot visible equals false so i'll make a note of this sorry this is if you're in r6 this is in if you're in r15 anyway if we were to now uh, test this i'm going to hit play and then play here in fact we won't be able to test it yet because uh it won't appear so what i'm going to do is make our background visible click uh play here or just anywhere really you can just click play and you'll see when we hit exchange it should teleport us above the exchange thing and then we fall down as you can see i'm still falling over but we are exchanging but i'm still falling over so maybe i'll need to add a bit more so i'm going to go with a vector three of maybe five on the y it's just a matter of playing to figure out how much you need to change your y offset because of course everyone's going to fall down at a different amount so that's kind of worked. You see we're sort of falling over. Okay, so now what we're going to do is make a debounce, which by default will be false. And we're going to um, go under replicated storage and add a brand new remote event, which we're going to call full stamina. Now what we can say in this script here under this db equals false, game.replicatedStorage.fullStamina.onClientEvent colon connect function. 
So this here will be called whenever we fire uh, the client full stamina. Now in here we need to make the uh, frame invisible, uh, the frame visible. So if debounce is false, then script dot pair uh, or do we just say button dot parent uh, dot visible equals true. Now the reason we've got a debounce here is because otherwise it might flicker on and off and on and off if they keep closing it. Anyway, we'll then say game dot workspace. Uh, dot coin pad, uh, not so not coin pad. We need to find the coin pad. Dot exchange building. Dot coin pad. Dot touched. So when they touch the coin pad, colon connect function. Uh, we'll say db equals false. We also need to pass hit in here, as that's just something that gets passed in. But we're not using it. And then if they touch it, we'll set the debounce to false. Ready, so this can be called again. What we're going to do now is under our event script. Um, oh, there's a bit going on here. Under our uh, add points, we're going to say uh, at the bottom if player dot leader stats or other stats. Sorry, I always forget that. Player dot other stats dot points dot value is equal to player dot other stats dot stamina dot value. Then we're going to say game dot replicate storage dot full stamina colon fire client and pass in the player because we won't want to fire the uh, full stamina thing. So now if we make this invisible we should be in a full swing of action here. So let's just test this. So I'm only getting one point at a time. I'm just going to uh, buy myself some... when I said buy myself, go to my upgrades increase my upgrade level to like level 5. So I get 5 per step. And you'll see more, as this approaches 250 when it eventually prompts us to, it should, when it reaches 250, it prompts us to sell. And then if we click sell, it will teleport us to the exchange button. And we will fall over. I will work on that for a future video. But for now, this is the basic system. We hit exchange, we fall down, and we sell. Awesome. Now, as I say, you do fall. I'm, I will fix it. But for now, in the meantime, we've got a nice little system going here. So we can exchange and everything. And yeah, it's quite nice. It should appear again. Exchange, and as you can see, we're exchanging. Awesome. So everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. In the next video, I will either try and fix this falling problem, or I might do that as well. But I think what we will do is work on the stamina upgrade. I'm not 100% sure yet if that is what we will do, but that's where I'm heading at the minute. So I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.